In recent days, SpaceX has shocked the world with its astonishing speed. In 15 hours, the company has rolled a new Starship out to the South Texas Launch and Test Facility, reassembled the world's largest rocket, launched Starlink satellites to orbit, and recovered a reused Falcon 9 booster in port. How incredible! All aimed toward Elon Musk's dream of colonizing Mars, but obviously, all of that is never enough in the real world. SpaceX has already extensively experienced launching, landing, and reusing orbital-class rocket boosters thanks to Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. The Starship upper stage, however, will have to survive orbital velocity atmospheric reentry some three to five times faster and exponentially more energetic than Super Heavy boosters. To do so routinely while keeping Starship's cost and complexity low and reusability high, SpaceX will have to develop an unprecedentedly effective heat shield that's easier to install, maintain, and reuse than anything that's come before it. So this is Elon Musk's TPS Genius Design, which is better than others. For many years, SpaceX has already developed a working heat shield for the Dragon spacecraft, but Starship is a different beast entirely. The Dragon capsule returns from space and lands in the water and then goes off to a factory to be refurbished and the heat shields replaced. On the other hand, Starship needs to be ready to fly again immediately after landing, adding that there will be zero refurbishment plans between one landing and the next takeoff. However, it's really an extremely difficult problem, thus enter the shuttle. Ceramic shuttle tiles had a history of glitches. It took forever to glue on those thermal tiles that shielded space shuttles from the scorching heat of re-entry. Nearly two man years of work for every flight, and the glue dried so fast technicians would have to mix a new batch after every couple of tiles. But they came up with a solution, spit in the glue and it took longer to harden. The trouble was the spit weakened the adhesive bond between the tiles and the shuttle's aluminum shell, making them more likely to fall off during the spectacular stresses of spaceflight. When NASA officials found out about this home remedy, they of course put an end to it. Spitting in the glue, a common practice in the shuttle's first decade, is just one example of the troubled history of one of the shuttle's most crucial features, the 24,000 heat-resistant ceramic tiles that cloak the spacecraft's underside. A catastrophic failure of those tiles is a prime suspect in the disintegration of the shuttle Columbia and the deaths of the seven astronauts aboard. From the first shuttle's first flight in 1981 when 16 tiles fell off and 148 were damaged, according to NASA documents, tile problems have plagued the shuttle program. NASA worried not only about how to make them more quickly and maintain them more easily, but more important, how to keep them from falling off, getting knocked off, or breaking off. Sadly, the answers were never fully found by NASA. Now let's meet Starship and see how Elon Musk answers this on his Starship. Firstly, we'll mention that he has the support of stainless steel. The shuttle airframe was made of aluminum which loses half of its strength at 200 degrees centigrade. Starship is made of stainless steel which can go up to around 700 degrees centigrade before it loses half strength. That makes the problem of thermal protection much easier. Besides, stainless steel construction is less vulnerable to small gaps between tiles, which would allow a wider tolerance for installation and inspection and less susceptibility to minor damage. With the Space Shuttle's aluminum airframe, excessive heating would cause rapid and catastrophic melting of the structure. Stainless steel, in contrast, maintains its strength up to a much higher temp. Actually, one advantage of Starship is the tiles can almost be uniform. The Space Shuttle had a large number of custom tiles, 23,400 unique tiles each fitted to a particular spot on the vehicle. So if tile number 4269 was broken, you had to custom make a new tile that fit precisely into that spot. On Starship, the tiles themselves are much tougher and having a much longer service life. And importantly, most tiles are supposed to be the exact same, so you can exchange any tile with any new tile coming out of the tile pile. That's especially helpful for Mars, where crews would keep a cache of replacement tiles on hand in case one's damaged during a Mars trip and it needed to be replaced during transit back to Earth. Now, are you curious why the heat shield is hexagonal? Elon Musk once explained that the hexagon is a great shape because it offers no straight path for hot gas to accelerate through a gap, and of course it will reduce the hot air acting on the ship. 
Well, it's an innovation that no other company came up with before. Starship's TPS tiles are currently made in Florida at The Bakery. In an interview with Tim Dodd, Musk described the tiles as having no meaningful limit to their lifespan. Additionally, Musk stated that the hardest parts of the vehicle to protect against re-entry heating are the flap hinges. Ensuring hot plasma doesn't get into the hinge and destroy the vehicle is not trivial as the seal must simultaneously not damage the tile and survive the heat of re-entry. This means a metal seal is required. With a full heat shield, Starship's dry mass will hopefully not be much more than 100 tons. Musk added that adding one ton to the ship removes about two tons from payload after taking into account the added mass and increase in propellant needed. Next, how to attach the tiles on Starship. In April 2020, Elon Musk confirmed on Twitter that the current design involved affixed heat shield tiles directly to Starship steel hull with steel studs. Especially, they use a robot to do this. In retrospect, robots could be the perfect solution for the affordable high volume installation of the thousands of heat shield tiles that a single Starship will need. Once tolerances are high enough, it's conceivable that multiple different Starship sections could be individually outfitted with studs and heat shield tiles by robots, then inspected by humans, then joined together to form a complete Starship. Humans would likely need to manually install a gap of tiles around the well lines of those final sections, but the manual installation work would be reduced to a minimum while keeping the required infrastructure dead simple. Regardless, as we discussed in the previous episode, SpaceX is now facing some problems with TPS. They're therefore still working to improve this. Besides, they're also cooperating with NASA for the first orbital flight. The program, referred to by NASA as the Scientifically Calibrated In-Flight Imagery, or SciFly program, will use a NASA aircraft to study Starship's heat tiles when it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere after a planned orbital test flight. The details were revealed through a presentation shared by NASA's Langley Research Center. The presentation revealed that NASA will develop a new imaging system it refers to as a high-resolution observation during re-entry using calibrated infrared cameras, and it will be used to monitor surface temperature of the entire lower surface of Starship spacecraft during hypersonic re-entry. The imaging system will be flown on NASA's WB-57 aircraft, operated by the agency's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. This aircraft has been used previously to observe SpaceX missions, like the Dragon DM-1 mission, which tested SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule in 2019 before the DM-2 mission flew astronauts Robert Binken and Douglas Hurley and resumed flights to the ISS from U.S. soil a year ago. Through the program, NASA hopes to let SpaceX drastically reduce the launch cost of the Starship program. Musk has also mentioned low cost several times, with the executive hoping that a 150-ton Starship launch to LEO would cost about $1.5 million, resulting in a per kilogram cost of $10. Rapid reusability of the entire Starship launch system, including the heat shield technology, is critical for achieving this reduction. Thus, the partnership with NASA would allow SpaceX to enable the first ever fully reusable orbital launch and entry vehicle. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section because your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.